Hello and welcome to another tutorial video from Lightroom Plugins. This time I'm going to be through how to find and run the duplicate finder and what most of the settings do. So this is going to assume that you've already got it installed in Lightroom. If you haven't then there is a separate video on doing that so go and have a read of that first. Now the first thing that I need to note is where to find it. I get quite a few questions saying I installed it and it's not there because people have done this. They've gone onto the file menu and they've gone into plugin extras and it's not there. And the reason for that is that that's the wrong menu. It's on the library menu, plugin extras. That is in the manual and it's covered in the FAQ and it's covered in the troubleshooter but still get lots of questions about it. So if you can't find it, make sure you're looking in the right place. Library menu, plugin extras, and find duplicates. Okay, so this is the main configuration dialog, and these are all the options you've got, so I'll simply run through them from the top. Search all photos is probably what you'd expect. Go through every photo in my catalog and see if there's any duplicates of it. Now, one of the things that this has been designed for is to be fast. You can see there I've got just over 25,000 photos in here and I do have a reasonable number of duplicates in there, deliberately. And it will go through that in a minute or so and I will run through a full search at the end of the video so you can actually see that in real time. Now, the other options, the next set down, make a big difference to what's found. Capture time and ISO rating are always on. If a photo is a duplicate, then these will be identical, and pretty much every camera going back forever has recorded the capture time and the ISO rating. Some of the other things, they're not recorded that accurately. The next option down is for the lens. Normally that would be identical, however, in the past what I've found is that if you export a JPEG from Lightroom, the lens description can end up being different even though it's theoretically an identical photo. So you can choose whether to match those or not. It may not even be recorded, so that's something that you might need to check. Shutter speed, aperture and exposure bias are hopefully fairly obvious if your camera records them and pretty much every camera does then these will be identical for photos that are genuine duplicates. For photos which are bracketed and you can bracket on shutter speed, aperture, exposure bias and in fact ISO rating these days these will of course be different so whether you see something as a duplicate or not depends on what you're trying to find if you're looking for bracketed sequences, then you might want these switched off. If you're looking for absolute one-for-one -one duplicates, then you need these switched on. The other options get a little more tricky towards the bottom. The base file name option will try to match things where the file name is identical across the board. So it will match myphoto.dng with myphoto.jpg, for example. That would be considered the same myphoto.gng would be considered different to a different photo.dng, even if everything else matched. Again, whether you need this depends on what you're looking for. Virtual copies don't take up any space on disk, so you may or may not want to find those as duplicates. If you're not sure what a virtual copy is, then visit learntolightroom.com. There's a great tutorial over there on how they work and how you can use them. But again, you can choose whether to skip those or not. And the last two tick boxes in there cover whether to match images that have been cropped. The other options on there exclude entire classes of photos. What you can do with this box, the ignore keywords, is enter one or more keywords with spaces between them. And if any of the photos that are found as duplicates after matching all of the stuff at the top, then they'll be discarded if they have any of these keywords. Now one of the smart things you can do with Lightroom is that you can assign a keyword and you can tell it not to export that. So even if you're sending your photos off to photo agencies for example, you can still add keywords that are useful to yourself in situations like this 
but which don't get exported when you send those photos off to other people. This option simply allows you to exclude certain types of images. So if you're trying to find duplicates of DNG files and you don't want all of the JPEG copies you've got to show up, then you could say ignore JPEGs. And this one works in pretty much the exact opposite way. You could say I only want JPEGs. Obviously if you set these to the same thing, you're going to get nothing. So I'm going to set that back to any and hit OK and now it's running and I'm not going to edit this at all this is going to run in real time over 25,000 photos. Now the drop down list at the top of that dialog had two additional options you can search for selected photos or you can search within selected photos and although they work in much the same way Okay, interrupt there. Uh, it has finished and we've got 3,300 matches and it's taken 23 seconds. So over the 25,000 photos it's got, that's certainly a very usable time. So I'm briefly going to bring up that dialogue again. Now, as I was saying, you can choose within selected or for selected and these apply all the same criteria as the search for all but they work in a slightly different way fairly obviously this one searches only for duplicates within the photos you've selected and this one searches the entire catalogue for photos that you've selected so this one can return rather more however there is a gotcha for these two modes which catches people out and what this is, is that when you have selected a photo, it will always be included in the results. Which means that, let's say you have set that to ignore images of type JPEG. And you're searching for selected, and one of the photos you've selected is a JPEG. Well, that one will be included in the results. And the reason for that is very simple. It's so that if you select a photo and ask it to find duplicates of it, it's a little confusing if it finds nothing whatsoever because the one that you've selected, the one that you've told it to work with, is immediately discarded because it doesn't want it in the results. So that's not particularly obvious, but it does kind of make sense if you see it from that direction. So I'm going to cancel out of that. I'm not going to run the search again and I'm going to come into the collections panel on the left of the grid here and if I open that then you can see here that we have all of the photos. These are smart collections which you can see from the little cogwheel in the bottom right hand corner of the icons and all you need to do to find your duplicates is pick one of these collections and I'm going to do a separate video on how to interpret these, how to use them and probably most importantly, how do you delete them? I think that covers all of the options. They will change over time because I've got plans to add more searching abilities to there, but for now, thanks very much for watching.